Welcome to the program Road to Edo 2024, which you live from ITV. From Benin, my name is Daniel Praise Ose Debame. Of course, I'm going to be your host tonight, and uh, we are going to be looking at something very, very important in the build up to the uh, governorship election before the primaries. You know, we saw how political parties were actually having different, different, different aspirants from all gender. But however, uh, it, it seems the whole political party, apart from one of the party, PRP, that actually produced a female candidate. Others actually have the male folks drawing or running or flying the political party's flag ahead of the September 21st governorship election. But, but the question is, uh, the quest for having a running mate, if we have all men uh, pushing the weight or representing these political parties, what now happened? to uh, the women folks. What now happened to them? Are they just going to support from the polls? Are they going to just support from behind? Are we going to have a female running mate? That's what we're going to be looking at today on the show. And we have with us uh, in the studio, Comrade Bali. Yes. I got Comrade that correct. Bali, yes. But I just wanted to be sure I'm pronouncing the name very well. <laughs> Bali Joseph. Okay, Comrade Bali Joseph. Yes. Good to have you on the show. Thank so you, walk us through. Thank you very much. L let's start with the major political parties we yes. have. Three of them. Okay, yes. four of them. NNPP is part of it. Okay. The NNPP, the Labour Party, uh, PDP, the People's Democratic mm -hmm. Party, and the APC. Okay. They all have our agenda. Yes. They have the male folks flying the flags. Yeah. Is it possible to have a female running mate? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good evening, uh, viewers at home. Uh, for me, uh, if you, note, if you look uh, towards uh, the 2023 general election yeah, yeah. that I had in March, you see that uh, about, 20, uh, about 15 political parties actually gave female deputy governors, uh, deputy governorship running mm. 15 political parties, you understand? But uh, by, I think about six succeeded. That's why we have about six female deputy governors okay. as I speak. But mm. even our... Uh, Next door or next door neighbor, yeah, uh, River State. River State yeah. They have a deputy, female deputy governor. Oh. Even Wiki also had a, dep a female deputy. Yeah, yeah. Before he left so, office. So you can see that uh, it's not. It's something that's very doable, very yeah. visible, and it's something that should be done. Most especially looking at the passion driving uh, even the first lady of the state. Oh. She has been conversing, supporting, and promoting women equality and all that, oh, okay. and how they can do a balanced. Uh, uh, political sharing formula where the women will not be left aside. So mm. for me, I think this should be a litmus test, most especially for the uh, ruling party in a do currently now. Mm. I think the first lady needs to do more, converse more on this particular issue. Mm. At least since the male folk has a, a male deputy governor, um, a male governorship mm. uh, candidate, it will not be bad if they can ignite that fire. But, but, but we've never had a female deputy governor in the states. We've not. In Edo states. Yeah, it's Since the history of Edo states. That's state. what I'm saying. So is it possible? It's doable. Edo, very, very doable. Edo is not river states. Edo is not river states. Edo may be rivers. But, <laughs> but the truth is that... Edo is not Lagos. Uh, but the truth is that it's something that should be done. Okay. You understand? It's something that should be thought of, think of, uh, 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 nurtured, and we can see, we can run with it. For me, I don't see anything wrong with having a female as a deputy governorship candidate in this state because it will also give that women the sense of belonging because if you look generally elections during elections is these women and the youthful population that they actually definitely the, the, come the out of vote. Yeah, understand. so yeah. why can't we encourage them why can't we bring them back uh, and encourage them by putting them in the ballot at least they should get ownership and a sense of belonging so are we bringing a female candidate or a female running mate mm. uh, just to gain sympathy from the women folks is that what you're saying it's not about gaining sympathy from the women food if women are mothers and you understand that motherly disposition they have, mm. the ability to carry everybody along, unlike the male folks. So I think putting a woman, you know, they will say no woman, no nation. That's you, true. You understand? So for me, I think making, bringing a man and a woman together as a joint ticket, we make that ticket more robust, more friendly, you mm. understand, more acceptable. But all genders, we accept it. Mm. Most especially if we even have a youthful one at that, because the youth constitute about 70% of the voting population. That's true. So bringing a youthful de female as a deputy to any of the male will even create more, uh, 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 it will bring more impact to any of those, any of the 
uh, major political, political parties. parties. Okay. Uh, so give them so more. you are saying now Labour should start considering having a female. Definitely. APC should start considering having Certainly. a female. PDP, PDP should, should start get yes. looking for a female running mate. Especially PDP. because NNPP too should have they female should. running mate. Yes. They PRP should. should have a male running mate. <laughs> yes. They already have a female, female running, running mate. Just to balance the mm. gender. Because now, like even the like I was saying just now, mm. I, I was talking about the role the, the, the governor's wife has been playing. Yes. Yeah. It, it's uh, very conspicuous. Everybody has been saying how she's mm. been fighting for the female folks. So I think it's high time she lead the team in making sure that they start from their own political parties mm. by insisting that at least you have gotten the may, a mid uh, governorship candidate. Why not give a female that chance so that we can merge these two gender? And I think with that, I do we even uh, benefit more. So, do, do you think Her Excellency uh, Mr. Obaseki, the, 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 the governor's wife, wife yeah. uh, do you think she can really convince? Her party, the party her husband belongs to, automatically she's a member no, of she, that party. She's been doing that. She's been doing that because we've seen a lot of uh, impact she's done in the past few mm. years. You understand? I think in uh, Doe history, she's one of the uh, first ladies that has made so much impact in women participation in politics. The records are there, right from SSCs, SCs, uh, commissioners, uh, 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 local government chairman and mm -hmm. all that. So she's, she has been advocating. If you notice, uh, sometime early this year, before the, no, uh, last year, when, uh, before the build up of the local government election, okay. you saw where she mobilized women to the state secretariat to demand that she wants 50%. So if she can demand 50% as at that time, mm -hmm. I think this is the best time for her to also demand that we want a female deputy governor. Mm -hmm. I think the husband will definitely oblige, and the party will also, because even the st response from the state party chairman at that time was also pleasant. They agreed the role of women in the party. There are other stakeholders, yes. apart from the governor and other persons. Of course, the governor is the leader of the party, True. Uh, as a matter of fact. But there are other um, key stakeholders. stakeholders in the party. Won't they have bottlenecks? Won't they ha kind of have some resistance? You know, the truth you is know, that... Politics is all about interest. Yeah. So wouldn't they have resistance? Like I said earlier, I said before the build-up yes. of the, lo uh, the local government election mm. sometime last year, the governor's wife engaged stakeholders. Mm. She went to the party secretary and addressed leadership of the party. And they also, they saw reasons, they saw wisdom mm. in, her, in her dispositions and all that. And because of that, they made some concessions. So I think if she is able to advocate for this too, mm. definitely it's a give and take thing. You understand? The, sh the leadership of the party, like you said, the women also have an interest because they also put more in politics. Mm. So they too should, should also, their interest should also be protected by all political parties. Now, talking about interest, mm. every governor wants to have a loyal deputy governor. True. Every governor wants to have somebody who will not give him trouble. True. Over time we've seen serious so, bus bows between yeah, the yoga and the deputy you know we've seen it happen yes. everywhere around the nation yeah. but don't you think that could be the fear if you have a woman uh it, it, it might kind of uh, uh is it going to be risky having a female no, deputy it governor it will, it will, since it, it's the first time it will be it, flying it for the first, first time. time yeah uh, for me i think it will be very, very peaceful. It will be a peaceful transition. You think so? Yes, because women are not that of ambitious. Though, yeah, there are, there are some women who are ambitious, mm. but I think that modality disposition, they will not go too far like what we have been seeing. And you know, if you see most, uh, the governors, governors and their deputy crisis starts from when they want to end their tenure. Mm. You understand? Because of that ambition of the deputy that, ah, I want to take over from you. You understand? It's difficult if you look at all the, even all the states that we've had female deputy governor. We've never experienced such. You don't uh, hear anything. Yes, they've not, they've, I have even in River State just now, mm. you, we didn't hear anything like that. It was peaceful and all that. So, but in all that, you have a male and a male, run, uh, a male deputy uh, and a male uh, run, uh, governorship. Mm. You, you have always seen these issues. It has been coming back to back, even from year where we are here in even in those states yes, yeah, that's why those late, yes. so it has always been them. like that so mm. i think having a female deputy itself we even minimize that problem that crisis but the way you're talking now yes. are you assuring her do like 
<laughs> that we are going to have a deputy governor who will not have ambition. Yeah. It's very, it's practically impossible. We are human beings. Let's no, let's talk reality. We agree that let's everybody. talk reality. No, the truth is that comrade, no, comrade, no, no. let's talk reality. No, the reality on ground is that no. women have ambition. Also, okay. you understand, but they are not over ambitious. They are not over ambitious. ambitious. Okay. You understand? They will not be too desperate to want to do undo just mm. to get that position. You understand? They can just push for it, negotiate for it. If it's not coming, they just. But a man, we want to do. Everything. I, I said, I'm a man. I'm a man. You are a man. I'm, mm. Let's show our muscles. So that's how you see that states are being engulfed with political wars and all that. You see, a deputy, the governor, they are having cold war. The mm. state is being put into two more. So I would not say, I would not say when we, we have females that are timid. No, it's not about timidity. It's just about that motherliness of a woman. You understand? Yeah, they are able to accommodate everything. You know, the women, women are like shock observers. They absorb <laughs> every issue. So, so they are able to absorb everything mm. that happens. You understand? Mm. They have that, uh, that's why they multitask. They have you a way of pressing the pressure Thank down. you. You're like a man, that, mm. a man feels his the head and he doesn't want to be uh, uh, shortchanged by another man. Mm. So he feels that. But the woman tries to be loyal and submissive. So once they say, Madam, this thing will, they will just naturally want to give up. Mm. But a man will want to put all his best. It's better. He goes, say, Nayere, nah, kill and put. Better person, nah, yeah, if, 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 if we take it to the family line, yeah. when the husband says, I'm the head, some women will tell them, I'm the neck. Yes. <laughs> so but they have a way, of, a strike a they have a way of negotiating, not mm. through violence. That's not one thing I'm just, Not through violence. So the neck can control the, the head. The neck can control the head mm. in a way. You understand? But if it's a man and a man, mm. the head will hit the head. Mm. And it will not turn to fight. You are trying to convince me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are getting me right here. Yeah. Okay, now uh, if you look at our, our political landscape, yeah. are we not going to say, political wise, we are not fair to the female folks uh, and the youth? No, I think to a large extent, the youth and the uh, the women they've not been faring well, naturally, uh, basically in those states. Sincerely, yeah. if you see in Akwa Ibom State, a 38 years old was elected senator. But this part of it, do they have one mentality when they see young people want to aspire? They say, Ah, oh, you're too young now, go, you're too young now. They have that mentality. The old ones, as in, you cannot eat your time and eat our time. It's wrong now. Yeah. You've, you've used your time, you want to use our time. So, the, that there's a problem, it's a syndrome in it, do the, the older politicians, they don't want the younger ones to go. Yeah. They, they, once, once they see that you are, you are enlightened enough. They say this one is a threat. They say, you know, give this one. We know if you use this one. Mm -hmm. You understand? They, 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 all, they have always devised a way to choose. If a 38 years old can be a senator in uh, Aqua Ibon State, why can't a 38 years old be a senator in Edo? But once a 38 years old senator comes out, you see, they'll say, ah, it's too ambitious. Mm -hmm. It's too ambitious. It's not a small boy. I want to be this. You understand? We've had so many statements like that, even in the build up of this, uh, 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 those governorship. The APC it. candidate is 42 or 43. People have been criticized, it's too young, it's too young, and so what? Mm. We need more young people because we cannot allow those people who messed our system, mm. putting to us in the system. to continue being in the system. So is, it po is it possible to eradicate them? Is, it is very possible. Is it, is it, is it possible? It's doable. How, how, how possible? If you see, uh, one of the basic problems the, pol the political class have used against uh, young people is on this hunger we talk about. You understand? You know, they've made everything look as if. Uh, the, uh, the way Nigeria has even been structured currently is that they want poverty to be hereditary. Yeah. They want poverty to be hereditary. And that's the only way they can use, you understand? Because let's say for meeting, for village retreat, you know, they give poor man treasurer. Because, <laughs> <laughs> because to rig enter, that's <laughs> this is your party. <laughs> so, so they try. In village meetings, you don't give no, the poor man. No. You don't make him the treasurer. No, treasurer, no. Because Story must enter that meeting. He said that a dick wants uh, you can pay picking school fees and all that. So for Story not to end. so they try as much as possible to to make uh, poverty. Yeah. You understand? Endemic. So that immediately they just throw everything. You see young people running towards them and ah the leader, the leader, the leader. No, if they are still leading, yeah. what time will you lead? So that's my problem with young people. You see them running after these old men. Uh, they are leaders. They are leaders. This is our time. They messed up the country. We mm -hmm. should be allowed to now remedial what they've messed up. So not you telling us that, no, you are still too young. Wow. Mm -hmm. A 40-year-old okay. old man, you are saying it's too young. When do you want with, to do with, it? With the level of hunger in the land, do you think it will be easy to just uh, get the youth 
mobilize them and tell them to shun uh, vote buying. Looking at the rate of hunger in, the, in Nigeria. It will be very difficult, but it's not impossible. It's not impossible. You know, we need to create more awareness, just like your platform. More mm. platforms and uh, more people need to, like civil society, uh, faith-based organizations and all that need to step up they more, move around, educate, because this thing has to do with education. Mm. You understand? Taking a bag of rice, because once they have been told that for every rice you take, it's one road. Mm. For every 10,000 that you take, it's, it's one school. You understand? Oh. If you, so why take 10,000 that you not use for a day and miss a road that will serve you all through your life? So these are some of the things we need to advocate more. So advocacy, just like your platform, other platforms should avail us this opportunity to speak more on vote buying and the dangers of rigging elections. These go together, vote so buying youth, and elections. Youth, they have actually eaten the roads. <laughs> The good schools, <laughs> yeah. the electricity they should have. Yes, yes. Good health. That's that's the issue. They they ate it before the election. That's what they do. They don't know unknowingly mm. to them. So you know ignorance. You need to explain to them mm. that a politician will not just invest his money for what he will not get returned. Mm. And for every money he spends, he wants to recuperate that back that money. So if he's sharing ten ten thousand per vote. And just imagine, we have like in Neduna, we have about 4,000 something polling units. Mm. You can imagine, look at the voting population. So if you spend such an amount just to win election, won't you get back that money? So you must definitely get back so that that's money. why you don't hear from them again? Yes, that's another have, election Yes, time. another election. You understand? Mm. The average politician, the first uh, uh, major, his first major aim is to win election. Mm. The second one is to win re-election. So the people come maybe like fourth, fifth mm. in their own agenda because that's their, their first agenda is to win election. But second, apart, from, apart from hunger, comrades, yes. uh, the youth, they actually use them too to carry out different kind of evil acts. True. Use them to snatch ballot boxes. Yes. Use them to fight other political yes, parties, you know. Yeah. Talk agree and all that. Know that. Yeah. Carry them to cause problem. How can we start sensitizing them to shun this violence? You see, um, I've always done that. If you see, in the build up of uh, do, um, the governorship election, uh, the uh, national elections, the general elections mm. in 2023, I did a program vote no fight in uh, though i narrowed it down to the river nine uh, areas because so you you, know, you were here we, yes with um, yes, yes, Ogolo. Ogolo, yes. Ogolo, yes. Yeah. so we, we partnered then we partnered with an edge and we did that program you understand uh, with the office of the uh, first lady that program created an impact you understand and i realized that if we continue to enlighten these people it's because you know some of these programs are not regular you understand? Maybe we we'll have to wait for another election. But mm. things like this should be done often. Mm. You understand? But you know, also funding is a challenge. You understand? So, but if we are able to do this quite often, media houses are also giving us their platform to educate people and all that. I think generally education is key. Mm. You understand? And you know, the rural settlement, they, they don't have that access. To sure. education, mm -hmm. you understand, and most times you see, most times you see they are importing these things, they are importing, they are importing. Why are they importing? Mm -hmm. You understand, because they want to bring people from the rural place who do not even have that, that orientation, mentality, that orientation. Mm -hmm. they don't even understand the dangers, they just want to collect that change. So they need to import, you understand, mm -hmm. that's what they do. So if we continue to narrow it down to local communities, mm -hmm. let them know all these uh, asso community based associations yeah. and all that, do programs mm -hmm. to. To tell them the dangers of all these things that they are doing, mm. I think it will, it may not eradicate it, but it will reduce it to the BRS. But don't you think there's, there's a quick action to this? Mm. Uh, in the build up to COVID, yes, when it started from China and other places, before mm. you know, my grandmom in the village, she knew about COVID 19. True. When we called her, she said, Hope you are wearing face masks to talk to me and all that. Yes. You know? So the, this, the level of sensitization was very heavy. Mm. So why is it that it's hard for government to? Let people know about the danger of vote buying. Mm. Let them know the danger of snatching box, um, yes. ballot box. Mm. If you can, get to grassroots level and inform them about the danger of COVID okay. and its spread. Okay. It's the same thing. You first of all ask yourself, who are the major beneficiaries of these actions? That's, this what, that's what I'm asking you now. Yes, now. I'm putting it to you. It is for these actions. Mm. You know, you cannot stop what benefits you. It's okay. difficult. What benefit them? Not yes. me now. <laughs> <laughs> so, Comrade Joseph, not yes, me now. Yes. These benefit people, them. These people, politicians, mm. let us uh, talk hey, this hey. that word. Let's call their names straight. Yes. Let's call their name. 
call them by their names. Politicians naturally mm. are beneficiary to this violence. Okay. You understand? Vote buying and ballot box slashing. Mm. So even if they get into power, they will not want to destroy that system that brought mm. them. Mm. So uh, you see, they want to encourage it. You understand? And they want to suppress any voice. If you want to do so many programs that will enlighten people, they will not want to even fund it. Mm. They will not want to even buy into it. You understand? They yeah. will not want to invest their resources in mm. such ventures. So they will just, they, they prefer to wait another four years again. They, they raise some money and recruit more talks again mm. and they use it. So this has been their style. L let's return back to the major four front runner, the political parties. parties yes. Let's start with um, Reverend Azemi Azena of the NNPP. NNPP yeah. Do you think if he's having a female running mate, it will fly that ticket? Uh, for Looking me, at the NNPP and their structure in the state, let's let's extract them. Just the four. Let's okay. extract four of them. Yes, uh, like I said, mm. like I said, you know this um, women thing mm. is a very strong uh, movement mm. that I think political party needs to embrace. I've been saying it and I'll continue to say it. Mm. You understand? Uh, because. And like I said earlier, if you go to voting centers, mm. you just see women. If you even call political meetings, mm. the eighty-five percent of people you see around is. Let, 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 let's group other political parties together yes. now. We talked about Reverend Azema Azena yes. of the NNPP, yes. um, Barista Olumide Akbata yes. of the Labour Party, yes. um, Senator Mondo Pueblo yes. Akpakomiza yes. of the APC. APC. Then we we'll talk about Aswelime Igodalo yes. of the PDP. Yeah. The ruling PDP in the yes. states, as uh, the other man uh, uh, yes. from the APC, APC yes. which is ruling from the set, from the top. Yes. Now these four political parties put together, which of them would really need a female running mate? I think all of them need a, a female running mate. I think so. They just for a balance. I just think for me, I just want a balance. At least if you can, if you can get a female running mate to balance. Mm the gender equality, mm. gender sensitivity, I think it will create more impact, mm. you understand? It will, it will resonate more passion for mm. the women folks to so say, ah, that woman, that, that, that man, pick one woman mm. who just supports that woman, you understand? Mm. That, you see people tilt towards that direction. Mm. So I think it will translate to more votes mm. for that political party. So for me, I think they should consider it. It's something that they should consider. Mm. But why I'm speaking more about the uh, ruling party in a do state in the state. The ruling PDP. Yes, the ruling PDP is because I've seen the passion of the first lady of Edo mm. who has been fighting towards this direction. Mm. You understand? So I think they should use it as a litmus test. The, okay. the ruling political party in the state mm. should use it as a litmus test. Okay. You understand? Let's test run it in a do. Let's see. It has never happened before. Yes, let it happen once and let's see what... Politics is not just a game of number. Yeah. It has to do with money. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you will not just be running mate from, with mouths. Yes. You will bring money. True. A lot of money. Yeah. Lots of money. Heavy money. Mm. Because you not just be running on the. But the truth is that it's not about all about money. How much did the former deputy, the, uh, sorry, the deputy governor of Edo State bring hmm. to become the deputy governor? The, the deputy. So as, as a running mate, you don't really need. You don't really, need, you don't you don't really need, need money. You don't really need much to go, to be a, a running mate now. Just get on the ticket. Yes, now and fly. Yes, you definitely you would do you so you don't need because the, that principal, don't need money. the principal will spend. Yes, the party is spending. Yes, that's what I'm saying. So you are running mate now. You don't, really, you don't run. really need much. You don't really need much. It's not as bogus like running as a governorship candidate. You understand? It's not like bogus as running as a governorship candidate. So for me, it's something that even political parties can even take care of the responsibility of both the uh, the, deputy, uh, the deputy governor. So it's not a big deal. Taking political parties, there's a way they, they, there's some amount they even use in supporting mm. the the governorship candidates. Mm. You, you, know, you know, women know they give shishi sometimes. Uh, but that's they will preach and preach and preach. We are mothers, give women a chance, do this one. After they finish preaching, yes, you won't see money. Don't you think no. some of these political parties are afraid? No, they are not afraid. After all, today the deputy speaker is a female. Oh, that's true. The deputy speaker, how did she get to that position if she's not playing? She's not. She's not been politicking. You understand? She, yes, she got there. You understand? Look yeah. at, we have some female commissioners. Are they not doing well? They are doing well. So are they not giving, are they not settling their constituencies? The local government they are coming from, are they complaining about them? Are they protesting? It shows that the 
to a large extent is give and take. Mm. So, so Bajaja will now have a female uh, deputy uh, governor. Yes. Her constituency will not complain. <laughs> they will not complain. Her followers will not complain. No, I don't think so. Her female folks will not complain. Yeah, they, I don't think so. And there will not be anything like ambition towards the tail end of the administration, towards the tail end of the first term. There will be no there will not be admission. There will be no rancor. No governor want to have somebody that will give him a headache. No, definitely. That's why the governor will find more peace in having a female deputy governor. Okay. Thank you so much, Comrade Thank Joseph. You. Uh, you talk to Edo people now. Yeah, I'll yeah. give you the next mm. 10 seconds. Speak to them. Yeah. Convince yeah. them and mm. give them reason why they need a female deputy governor. 10 yeah. seconds. I have, uh, talk to them. They are watching you. Uh, you know, uh, Edo people, we've been trying uh, a male and male ticket for since 1999. I think it's high time we try... Uh, do gender equality. Let's have a female deputy governor in uh, in the three or uh, the four uh, major political parties. Let's have a female deputy governor. Let's test run it in a do. Let's see what will happen. I believe mothers are unique, and the mothers have a way of relaxing the house, even uh, with all the tension that okay. a man comes with. Mm. Mothers are able to calm down the tension. So, and mothers understand the dynamics. They I understand. I say 10 seconds, yes. comrade. <laughs> so, so. They've heard you. I just hope we are not going to have a female running mate mm. that will give serious headache to her principal. Let's see how that pans out as we will be seeing you on the next one. My name is Daniel Praise. Thank you so much Thank for you joining us. Do have yourself a beautiful night. Rest ahead and bye for now.